What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reacting to the penultimate episode of The Millionaire Detective. This one is titled Life Shouldn't Be Printed on Dollar Bills. Which is actually a very interesting point because uh, up until this point, money's been thrown around as a uh, way to compensate those who have suffered damages and those may have been injured in some of the incidents that have been happening. But you can't life is not equal to a sum of money, or at least it shouldn't be perceived that way. Uh, some people will, of course, but you can't change everyone's mind. Um, so it'll be an interesting way. I wonder how that's going to tie into it. I really do wonder. But this story is getting crazy. Like, I, we all had an inkling that this story was going to get crazy. I mean, just from the first two episodes alone, this show had that crazy factor to it. But it was very self-contained, episodic. And it was like, it was like, how can I put it? It's like a... I don't know how to best describe it. But it felt like there was no main plot that was following through all of it. But uh, ultimately, as with all episodic-based shows, most of them will have a main theme running along them that leads and connects them. Like, uh, It Invaded did the very similar thing. Uh, to start with, most of these cases were self-contained. However, there were instances where you started to see where all of them were starting to link up slowly but surely until it came to that finale, uh, which was still insane and still one of my favourite detective shows that I've ever watched and one of my favourite shows of not only winter 2020, but of the entire year so far, like even including uh, uh, spring and summer seasons now that we're wrapping these up. is like Innovator still is one of my favourites and I would love to get that re-uploaded to the channel at some point. Uh, we'll see... How much time I have during the uh, tiny break that there is between seasons. There's not a lot of time. So we'll see what happens with that. But last time, we... Okay, so uh, Nakamoto uh, had the uh, two dice. Right? He had two dice. Uh, they're actually transmitter and receiver. So he actually planted it. And they can actually transmit and receive. And now they can actually track uh, uh, Shigamaru. Uh, or at least uh, the first division not First Division, the uh, Modern Crimes Unit, uh, can do that. And uh, they ha they're they under suspicion by um, First Division, because I feel like Shigemaru has some pull with the police uh, here, and so they're trying to set up uh, the uh, Modern Crimes Division and uh, Haru especially, as um as being the perpetrators behind this i mean the uh what's his face what is this guy's name um ba -ba -ba -ba, where was it uh hoshno there we go was it hoshno yes hoshno who at the time of the shooting which caused um Hara to go through all of this uh backstory with him uh shooting an innocent not really an innocent you point the gun at them but whatever um yeah, there was a there was a big shift in there, and they're utilizing that moment and completely reinterpreting it to suit, I assume, Shigamaru's agenda just to get the police off his back and just let him do what the hell, hell he's doing with this uh, adolium thing. I don't even know what it is. I don't know if it's a technology, if it's a substance, if it's an energy of some sort. It seems to be some form of, like, electromagnetic energy that can be weaponized. At least we've seen it weaponized so far. And considering he was meeting with an arms dealer, uh, what was it? Um, uh, yes, so it, the bodyguard, uh, Franz, uh, Franz Vensky, bodyguard to Thomas uh, Math Matheson, Matheson, I'm not sure how they, uh, Matheson, I'm not sure how they said the name, I have to uh, go back. Um, but yeah, he looks like he's meeting with an arms dealer to potentially militarize this and We'll see what his end goals with that are. I imagine we might get some exposition this episode, since we do have uh, Daisuke, Haru, uh, this uh, uh, Vensky guy, and Shigamaru all on this container ship and going off. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. We also had the... Since um, Husk was deleting all the footage of all this happening, so uh, Suzue and everyone could not actually track what was happening, uh, especially uh, Shigamaru's movements, uh, Suzue used gave a hundred thousand yen, which is a lot of money. Let's be real to anyone who puts their phone up and twirls it around, basically making a three sixty degree camera simultaneously across the entire. I don't know how much of a distance it was, like, the entire city at the very least. 
uh, to see where the hell he went, and it was to the uh, Aura Wharf, um, where Daisuke went on with this really cool suit, which I'm sure a lot of fan has come from. Haru, man- <laughs> excuse me, Haru managed to get on as well, and a really nice moment for Haru because aside from an amazing Daisuke fight with brilliant sound design and great tension in it, great music build up, like oh, it was a good fight, and it's still ongoing. Thing I like most about the whole Haru thing is that he didn't shoot the gun. Like it was, it would have been very easy to say because he's doing it for Daisuke, he managed to shoot the gun and help save his friend. But no, it's important that even now, even after all he's been through, he still cannot bring himself to do it. He couldn't bring himself to do it uh, with uh, uh, like every situation he's had to do it. He can't bring himself back. He still thinks back to it. And I think it's going to have to be something particularly powerful to actually want him to do it again. Or maybe Daisuke will say, you don't have to. There are other ways around it. Maybe that's something he's learned. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see what uh, comes of that. I imagine he will eventually end up shooting his gun. And it will be to help Daisuke. Uh, Daisuke out, probably. I mean, it just makes sense. But I, I like that they're not just shoving it in there as soon as they physically can. They're letting that moment build, and it's like, he still can't. Like, there's no guarantee he'd be able to by the end of this. Building up that tension, you know? It's actually really well done. So, uh, let's see here. Episode 10 on the Funimation. As per usual, bottom left of the screen down here, you're going to see the time of the episode. I'll count you down 3, 2, 1, play. Then on play, you start the episode, I start the episode, and we'll all be in sync. Uh, official Funimation version in the description. That's the version I'm watching. I'll call out the Anaplex logo and then the Funimation logo so you know we're roughly in sync for those of you who have different versions. You can also use screen glare and such to uh, judge it as well. So, I'm going to fix my light real quick because it's a bit too bright in my eyes and then we'll get going. So with all that said, let's get into episode 10, shall we? In 3, 2, 1, play. Anaplex. <clears> Throat. <throat> Animation logo playing. Here we go. Oh, wait, third studio animation logo. I forget this one has a third logo. Now we're in. <clears throat> Back on the boat. <clears throat> oh, dear me. Right, that's the Adolium thing. Jesus Christ, I love that thing. Oof. Yeah, there's the shattering communication with Suzue. He's not going to be able to bring himself to shoot. <clears throat> what for? Oof. What is going on here? I love this music, but... The container up top? Yes! I pointed that out last time! Get that container down! Okay. The music. Oh my god. I need the OST of this anime so badly. Tough love? Something's a bit odd here. Holy shit. That was quick. Like, he got up there and controlled it real quick. How did you not hear it either, but whatever. And he escaped. Hiding in the kitchens, okay. Wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know he wouldn't do that. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And OP time, okay. Interesting cutoff point to go into the OP, but still.
the way the that guy was speaking, he's just the bodyguard to an arms dealer, so I wonder what his attitude towards Daisuke is about. Because he seems to be maybe on a more familiar terms than just anything I would have expected, so I'm a little confused. I wonder if there is more to their relationship. Don't know. All right, back on the ship. Searching around. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. There's... Oh, God. <clears throat> Voice cracks are brilliant today. Dice gang. Come to your senses a bit, man, here. I know this is incredibly personal for you, but he's trying to help. Oh, boy. It is Polyador. It's the same place. Same place as that guy that came over. <laughs> Casual. Okay. So he's paying for extra. I'm not here to do this. Well, Hunter's 100 million yen sounds. I'm here to do this now. Oh, we're planning to escape. Yeah, no, Daisuke is not escaping. Naturally, I mean. Mm-hmm. This is the Adolium. Are we going to figure out what it actually is? Engine room. Wait, that's not a usual place for an engine room. I don't think. Engine rooms are usually along very central portion of the ship. I don't know. I don't know modern sh cruise, uh, cruise container ships. I mean, traditionally, it's always in center middle. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's fan out for that. Um, security. Oh. And then off go the drones. Holy shit. 20, Jesus Christ. This shit's getting crazy. This is a fully armed cargo ship. <laughs> why did it have to be a gamepad? Like, why did it have to be a gamepad? Uh, I love the sound effects, though. I really do. They were a distraction, weren't they? 100% they were a distraction. Or they were intended to be hit like that. Yep. Intended. Uh-huh. You... Yeah, distraction. Oh, beautiful. Mm-hmm. 
Let me guess, that's either guarded or not a possibility. Yep, guarded. Oh boy. Oh. Okay. Ho, ho, ho. This is the way it came through. <laughs> uh. Okay. Adolium. It's a big ship. Huh. Oh. A Dolian power source. That's... That's pretty impressive. Oh, really? Ooh. I mean, yeah, of course he's going to. And of course you'd say that. Be a distraction once more. Hmm. Okay. God, the music in this show is so good. And we're back. You really do. And you don't even have any fancy, uh, like, tech gadgets to help you this time. Uh, Suzue coming in clutch. Hmm. I mean, they could just shoot him. Yep. I mean, that works too, but... Just shoot his hand. Did he actually fall in? No. We didn't see a single bit of skin there. That was just his coat. Obviously, yeah. How they could be satisfied with that, Jesus Christ, they are not that good. I was tricking the book using a jacket or coat to hide you. Holy shit. Magnetic piston fusion reactor. Oh. Really? Perpetual energy, that's how... Okay. Okay. Nice. Fucking music slaps so hard. <sighs> mm hmm, sure. Let me guess, his ASV started activating now and he's invisible. Go on. 
Oh, no, it hasn't yet. Okay, he's just smart. Yep. Holy shit. Oh, can you do it? Shoot the pipe. Okay. Make the shot. Make the shot. You're not shooting a person. Do it. You can do it. You're not shooting a person. You're not shooting a person. This is the moment we're building up for. No, you're not. You can be a hero as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have. He's been watching every single time. Just the way he steadied like that. Holy shit, I love it. I love this. I love this so much. I don't want this show to ever end. Nice shot. <coughs> so that's the cooling. Oh, emergency power. Oh, that transition, I love it. Now it's the... Oh! <laughs> it's not a fair fight anymore. Every hit. Oh my god. Oh, absolutely fucking love this show. Right, no cooling. Yeah, no cooling. Yeah. Going for Shikamaru. Of course he will. Mm -hmm. Ooh, boy. That's not good. Yeah, this ship be sinking. Love it. Oh boy. We have a first face to face with him. You don't have a lot of time. Hmm. Bring him in for the rest. Mm hmm. But he would be in the end. He may have thrown away his badge, but at heart he'd still wanted to. Because he genuinely does care about the justice.
Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, damn. Oh, this thing's a blazing inferno. Jesus Christ, that was a really detailed fire and smoke animation. That was, like, really actually kind of good CGI. This is cinematic as shit. Of course. And Hughes was in his pocket the entire time, of course. We knew that. <clears throat> That's actually a really good smoke CG. And he's gonna escape. That wasn't as well done CG, but... Hmm. Why not? Okay, got them. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Yeah, there's still one more. This case ain't over. We've got one more episode to do it somehow. Mm-hmm. He was always there, he just didn't know it. Yeah, that ship fucking sank. Jesus. I said she... Holy shit. Of course it's on autopilot, why wouldn't it be? Where is he? Where is that? Oh no. Oh, is that the lab? That's the lab, isn't it? I recognize that symbol on the front of that building. And there was one attached to him this entire time. Good job, Suzue. 40, was that 40 billion yen of expenses? Holy shit. God, what a fucking finale this is setting up to be. I can't wait for this final face off with Shikamaru. I really can't. God, fucking amazing episode. I have so much I want to say about how much I appreciate this show. I'm going to save it for the actual discussion by the end, but I... Did that say CG was done by A1 Pictures? Because I'd believe that. i believe A1 Pictures doing the CG. 100%. Yeah, 3D A1 Pictures. It shows. It really does. Got such a good ED as well. Every bit of music in this show is on point. In this episode especially. And that's it. Holy cow. This... It's, it's a shame that these are only 23 minute episodes. Because my god, this show is perfection. Okay, so yeah, uh, A1 Pictures coming in to do uh, coming to do uh, that sort of work does not surprise me. Uh, in fact, if I remember correctly, isn't Cloverworks uh, Cloverworks that uh, animates this? 
I believe they were a, they are a break off from A1, aren't they? Yes, it was uh, Koenji Studio from A1 Pictures branched off um, branched off from A1 uh, in in late 2018. Um, uh, yep, uh, subsidiary of uh, Anplex. That makes sense. Um, But yeah, the 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 CG animation coming in from uh, the big boys A one don't I don't doubt that for a second. Just what go back and look at the the freighter uh, when it's um, when it's on fire and you get a wide shot of it when the flames are billowing up and the smoke is billowing up. Look at the the actual detail on that smoke texture. That looks way too good for a show like this. Like. Not to diss Millionaire Detective or anything, but it's never been about the animation quality. Like, it's always been there, and it's always been good. There have been some iffy moments here and there, but every show has their iffy moments. Like, even ReZero had their iffy moments. Um, not this week that I'm recording this, but the week before. They had a couple of iffy moments. But every show goes through that, and that's fine. But this... That CG was... It was brilliant. Like... And the the fighting's been on point. The mu- I need to know who does the music for this show. Who does the music for this show? I need to give them. Uh, you go, uh, you go, What what have you done music before? Because I swear, with what have you? You must have done something good as like really good in the past as well. He's done Psycho Pass. Did Levius. He's gonna be doing the music for Cells at Work Code Black. Oh yes, I'm hyped for that. I'm I'm hyped for Code Black now. I really am. Like I'm hyped for Code Black anyway. But like, if uh, Yuga Kano is coming over to do music for that as well, this shit's just gonna pop, just be great. He's done JoJo as well. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, you are one of my favorites in the music industry for anime now. When it comes to music, I I, I love you. Uh, sound director uh, Yoshikazu Iwanami. I have mad respect for you as well right now. Because, like, yes, every single sound effect that went through on this, incredible. Um, God, all these people. I'm seeing so many names here. All of you that have worked on this show and have done direction, animation, storyboarding, in between animation, photography, 3D, CG, uh, key animation, background art, all of you. Every single person who worked on this show, I have so much respect for you. Because this is honestly... This is honestly one of my favorite shows. It really is. And I think that's something that's... I think if you want the the secret to making a show that I enjoy, you need to have a plot that you don't just feed the audience and have them follow along. You have a plot that you lay certain groundwork in, like it invaded, like this. And detective shows are really good for this, because... Uh, that's the very, like, the base premise of a detective genre is that you can lay these seeds of things that you know are going to have purpose later on down the line, but the audience can only guess what they might be used for. And that just goes hand in hand with the, uh, the detective genre, which is why I love it so much. So that's key one. Have a story that builds over time and uses uh, certain shots, certain storylines, certain dialogues that were said earlier to link back and give more meaning to them that you might not have realized beforehand. Uh, a lot of good story-driven shows will do that, and um, this is making use of that as well. Um, like reintroducing Polyador again. That's making me think, wh- why Polyador? What is the... Why Polyador involved in this? Is it anything to do with the fact that they're building... That dam over the, the lands. Is it because they're trying to militarize in some way? Like, what is what is Polyador's stake in this? Because I doubt it's not just private company Polyador that's interested. It's almost certainly going to be politician Polyador that we've already met. Like, I, there's something to that that I want to dissect into. Shigemaru, why is he acting this way? What is his... Why has Adolian been this important to him that... Every other aspect of his life has come tumbling this way. Like, ah. Uh, like, uh, it's, there's so many questions I want to ask. So let's keep, that's step number one. Do that in a show, you've got me hooked, and I really am investing in your show. 
Step two, animation and CG usage. CG is iffy on certain shows because traditional 2D animation and CG, they can be jarring. It's not that the CG is bad. Go look at a show like Haseki no Kuni. Uh, there are plenty of good CG anime out there. Dorahedro is another example. There are plenty of good anime that use CG, and when you exclusively use CG, or exclusively don't use CG, it just flows well, because you you don't notice when it changes. Uh, I think that's going to be the real challenge, is how long will it be before CG becomes cheap, but good? Like, it becomes cheap enough to warrant its usage, but it looks convincing enough that it doesn't detract from the traditional style that we... Uh, normally see in 2D animation like if that ever if that transition happens in the next five to ten years which with the advancements of CG is very likely um, I think a lot of the uh, people that bash on CG in anime I think that their complaints will go away because they'll stop noticing when the CG is even there um, but the, the fire and smoke effects for that were pretty good I will say him flying away on the hover bike didn't look great the helicopter shot was okay I didn't mind it. It was framed nicely enough that the helicopter wasn't the main focus. Yes, it was the foreground, but it was very much emphasizing the background art. In that case, the massive water uh, explosion, which was, again, looked very, very good. Background art, very well done as well. That's another key thing. Like, a show that looks good just makes you... You, you just get into it more. And that's why I really did appreciate uh, the beginning of Alicization for Sword Art, is that I have my ups and downs with Sword Art, I think that's fair to say, but Alicization had fantastic visuals to back it up, so the world felt so much more interesting to look at and get engaged with, even if the character writing and story often fell short in my mind. Uh, Alicization did better, though, I think. First... First half of Alicization definitely did better. Uh, it kind of pieced off towards the end. Um, but that also brings me into the other thing that will really get me in a show. And I've mentioned this a couple of times uh, with... I've mentioned it with Decadence. I've mentioned it with this. I'll mention it with God of High School. Anything which has any form of fighting, sound design. Because you need... If you're going to be making a fight and you want it to have impact and you want it to feel like it's high stakes or high energy, high impact, anything like that, you need the sound design to be on point. Every little impact, every little movement, uh, uh, movement, every little moment and movement, um, for that matter, it has to sound right. And this does. Like, the charging up of the Adolium, the, the gunshots were on point. Every impact with the kick and the punch, uh, when he had his suit reactivated, Daisuke, uh, you could not only hear the impact of the punch, but you could hear his, what was it, the ASV? Is that was the name of the suit? I believe it was. But you could hear that as it charged up and was actually adding that extra oomph. And it was just, oh, so good. The explosions were good. Like, every little bit of sound design that I watched in this show and this episode has been on point. And not only has the sound design been on point, but the fucking music. I, <laughs> The music of this show is incredible. I need to find an OST of this show. I don't know if it's going to exist. I'm going to have a quick look before we end it. Uh, I just want to see if any of the Millionaire Detective... Millionaire Detective OST. Because obviously the ending's going to be on there. Obviously the intro is going to be on there. But how much of the actual music scene is going to be there? Ooh, hello. It looks like we might have some. Potentially. Potentially have some. Let's see. Ah, no, it's not. It's not. It's um, it's an attempted edit around the um, uh, around the dialogue and the moments in the show. It's it's not actually a. It's a it's a nice attempt, and I appreciate it, but it really just doesn't work because it's very jarring. Um, but if if uh, anyone ever finds where the OST for this is, 
please let me know. I need to see... I need to hear full versions of all these songs that are used. I'm hoping that even like a Blu-ray bundle or something that they get attached eventually because I need more of this music. It it fits the show so, so well. It's like, um, yes, they repeat certain things and some of them are a little cheesy. Like whenever Daisuke kind of appears and does something, like that, like that, that that's cheesy, right? But it's like, it's the cheesy... It's almost like the Bond stereotype. It's like, whenever Bond shows up, it's like, it's always like that same riff. And it's like, yes, there's little variations on it here and there as time goes on. And depending on which Bond you are, it's like, there are little subtleties there. But it still feels very James Bond, right? And I think this show is making good use. I don't know if uh, the music, whoever did the music for this, uh, is actually, or compo whoever composed the music, I should say, I'm not sure if they're taking any hints from, like, James Bond or that genre movie uh, from Western media. I don't know if they have any of that influence. I don't know if that's uh, come across and is prevalent in Japanese media when they do their uh, detective and, like, spy films and movies and stuff like that. I don't know if that also carries over and it's just become a universal thing, but I'd be very interested if they did take any inspiration from, from James Bond, because James Bond is a huge franchise. Like, absolutely huge. So it's almost certain that... If you're going to do a detective spy type show, you might have some sort of influence from it. I I very much love to know if uh, if whoever's done the music for this has ever done an interview. Maybe I, I'm grasping at straws here to get more information because I really want to know. Like this is partly why I want to be. This is why I want to learn Japanese. This is why I want to, um, like get more in depth with these sorts of things because I'm very much a novice when it comes to a lot of the anime production side. But I would love to build up the knowledge, build up the support to the point where ultimate end goal, goal I would love to interview the the people behind these shows. Not just the big name directors and like these big voice acts and stuff. That's great. There's plenty of interviews and fun moments that you can have with them. I'd love to talk to like uh, people who do sound design, people who uh, were supervising the CG, things like that. Because it's like I don't think they get much credit for the work they do necessarily, unless they're like a super huge profile one that does like a, a huge standout role thing that is like industry standard. Like everyone's going to attain this standard now because of what they've done. Like you, unless you reach that pinnacle, I don't think enough people get that sort of credit in the work that they put out. So I would love to be in a position where I could eventually one day do that. It's a pipe dream. It's never going to happen. But I would love to have be in that position one day or hope that I can support someone in that position one day you know but anyway I'm gonna end it here because I've been rambling too long here at the end of this but I have so much appreciation for this show like this show was already a high rating and this finale that we've built up to here I hope it has a good ending I I've spoke so highly of this show this week and last week I'm really gonna be I'm going to be annoyed if they're not a good finale out of this. But I have faith. Just one more week to go and we have a finale. And this might be... This might be my favourite show of the season. It might. Is it though? Hang on. What's competing? What's competing with this? What is genuinely competing with this for top show of the season? ReZero? I mean, that's a given. Miss Love Queen's Choice? Maybe. I don't think God of High School has yet. No, I don't think anything's going to take it away from Millionaire Detective now. No, I think Millionaire Detective is going to be my favourite show of the season, I think, at this point. God, it's so good. Anyway, I'm going to stop it there because I've been rambling on too long, but I love this show. And I hope that's coming across in my reactions and in my um, discussions and such, and you're feeling that energy that I am. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am too because this is genuinely incredible. It's a shame this doesn't get quite the viewership I think it deserves, but um, yeah, I love this show. I seriously do. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Leave a like if you did. Show some support for the show. It deserves all of it. Leave a comment on what you thought of the episode, how you think this finale is going to end. If you have any theories on why Shigamaru is the way he is, what the end goal of Adolium is beyond just being infinite power source, majorly destructive weapon. Why the link to Polyodor? Like, why is it Polyodor that showed up again? Uh, in passing there. And like what's the overall link here? 
what is the revelation they're going to drop here? Because I feel like there's one more surprise that they've got waiting for us, and I'm just waiting for it. I'm just waiting for that surprise, I'm going to be like, whole damn, that's where we're going with this. So, thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to subscribe as well to see the next week's finale, as well as the rest of the summer 2020 live you can find on my channel. Um, yeah, this, this show is lit. It, it's just absolutely lit. So thank you everyone for watching, and until next time, see you guys later.